I thank Ambassador Hussain Haqqani, Mr. Peter Tetro, Arif Yamar, and all those who are here for their kind presence. Thank you for being here to remember and pay tribute to Shahid Nawab Akbar Bukhti for his struggle and sacrifice for a better future of Baloch nation. Ten years ago, today, Pakistan Army brutally assassinated one of the greatest friends of the civilized world and the leader of the secular Baloch people who are uh, the only natural allies of the Western world in a region ridden with religious extremism and terrorism. He started a struggle which is not only for a better and bright future for his people, but also for lasting peace and stability in the region. Shahid Nawab Akbar Bukti laid the foundation of the Baloch movement with his struggle and great sacrifice. Nations are known by their leaders, those who they choose to represent them and lead them out of the darkness and suffering to a peaceful and bright future. Shahid Nawab Akbar Bukti was our an uh, elder leader who devoted his life to the betterment of the Baloch future and the aim of his life was to see the Baloch people as a free and prosperous nation. Nawab Akbar Bukti and the sacrifices of the Baloch martyrs have put the Baloch movement in a position where it has become impossible for oppressive Pakistani state to crush it or stop it from reaching its goal of an independent Balochistan, no matter how much force they use. Thousands of Baloch youth, children, women, and elders have been killed as a result of state aggression. Baloch political activists are abducted, killed, and dumped almost on a daily basis. Ambassador Bawa, during her activist years, had a reputation for giving voice to the voiceless. I really wish she had spoken out on the crimes against humanity and war crimes committed by Pakistan on the people of Balochistan. However, I will still thank Ambassador Power as she tweeted when liberal Karachi activist Sabine Mahmood was killed in April last year by Pakistani secret services. They did not want her to host an event on victims of enforced disappearances in Balochistan and killed her when she defied them. Pakistani army and intelligence services want to give away the Gwaza Court to China against the interests of the Baloch people and against the interests of forces of global democracy and freedom. This is the most serious threat uh, facing the Baloch people and the region today. China wants to take away Gwaza as part, as part of its strategy of string of pearls, naval bases on the rim of the Indian Ocean. Pakistani crimes against humanity are a shocker for the global community. Execution-style extrajudicial killings, arbitrary detentions, torture, kill and dump, and uh, burying in mass graves have become routine. Burning of entire villages, killing livestock, use of aerial bombardments, poison gases have all become routine issue amid Pakistani press blackouts. During the last five years, large number of Baloch ethnic journalists fell prey to Pakistani killing machine. Balochistan is also the world capital of enforced disappearances where 25,000 people have gone missing. As many as 6,000 people were killed and dumped in the last five years. Let me tell you, the winds of change are blowing across South Asia and Southwest Asia. I'm thoroughly indebted to the leader of the world's largest democracy, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, for openly condemning Pakistan for its atrocities in Balochistan. Mr. Modi also called for the freedom of Balochistan from the ramparts of, his, of the historic Red Fort. Prime Minister Modi has acted to fulfill his international role of responsibility to protect commonly called R2P under the new norms of international law. States do have the right to intervene by all possible means when a helpless people, in the case the Baloch of Balochistan, are subjected to war crimes, crimes against humanity, and are facing a genocidal situation. The right to humanitarian intervention, uh, intervention as a concept was born out of the tragedies that befell Rwanda and the Balkans a quarter century ago. The expression Responsibility to protect was drafted by the International Commission on Intervention and State Sovereignty, 
ICISS. <coughs> the report of the ICISS proposed that when a state fails to protect its people, either because of lack of ability or because of a lack of willingness, the responsibility shifts to the broader international community. There is a collective international responsibility to authorize military intervention in the event of genocide and other large-scale killing, ethnic cleansing, and serious violation of humanitarian law. As such, I will welcome political, moral, and military help from secular democracies for the people of Balochistan. Thus, Prime Minister Modi acted in the spirit of R2P concept when he talked about highlighting human rights violations in Balochistan from the ramparts of the historic Red Fort of Delhi on the Independence Day of India, it is the duty of the United States as leader of the free world to echo the call of Prime Minister Modi for, free, uh, uh, for freedom of Balochistan. US and India must work hand in hand with the freedom loving forces of Balochistan to prevent Chinese imperial designs in the warm waters of the uh, Baloch Gulf. The US and Western world needs to support the freedom struggle of secular Baloch people in order to defeat the evil designs by China and Pakistan in the region. I appeal to the US administration and lawmakers to follow suit. If India is the world's largest democracy, the US is the world's most powerful democracy. I'm sad that neither President Obama nor Vice President Joe Biden ever mentioned anything about extrajudicial killings and gross and uh, human rights violations in Balochistan in their nearly eight years in U.S. government. I would still like to appeal to President Obama, Vice President Biden, and Ambassador Power that it is never too late. I hope the new, uh, I hope the new U.S. President, whoever he or she may be, President Donald Trump, or Madam Hillary Clinton will turn a new leaf on Balochistan. Like the rest of the world, Balochistan is under threat of terrorism. Pakistan is an enabler of terrorism. American leaders must understand Balochistan is situated in an area of vital U.S. interest as the warm waters of the Gulf washes the 700 mile long coastline of Balochistan. For far too long, U.S. arms and ammunition have been used against the secular people of Balochistan. The concept of end use of U.S. weapons should uh, be a matter of concern of every American. The most important issue here is the U.S. has an excellent law called the Leahy Law. <coughs> I urge the U.S. government to uphold the Leahy Law uh, and punish the ISI, Military Intelligence and Frontier Corps for committing Tsunami of human rights violations and throwing the Geneva Convention to the wind in Balochistan. Just last month, during a hearing at the Congress, former diplomat Ambassador Zalme Khalidzad's call for sanctions against Pakistan. I think this is an excellent idea and I fully endorse it. I ask my American friends to think that while the army generals were busy in military operations against my grandfather and the Baloch people at another part of Pakistan in the city of Abbottabad, the very same uh, army generals were working to provide a safe sanctuary to the worst enemy of the United States, Osama bin Laden. In the eyes of Pakistani state, bin Laden was a saint for killing Americans, while my grandfather was a sinner as he wanted to defend the right of the Baloch people of Balochistan. My grandfather became suspect of Pakistani state because of his close friendship with Ambassador Robert Oakley and his ideas that matched with the U.S. policies in the region. In addition to the U.S., I also call upon NATO countries and Israel to help defend human life in Balochistan by upholding R2P. Here, I like to say I am indebted to members of the Congress, Dana Rohabarkar and Brad Sherman, who are both from the great state of uh, California for speaking out against Pakistani injustices in Balochistan. I am also indebted to uh, Tea Party members for fully supporting the idea of a free Balochistan. One of the founders of modern India, Mahatma Gandhi said, they may torture my body, break my bones, even kill me, 
then they will have my dead body, but not my obedience. This was exactly Shahid Nawab Akbar Bukhti's message to Pakistan 10 years ago. This is also the message of every Baloch to the root uh, terrorist Pakistan today. In conclusion, I also again thank Prime Minister Modi for speaking out in favor of Baloch uh, people. I hope the US President, either Obama or his successor, will help us and enable me to thank them too. In the end, I pay tribute to Shahid Nawab Akbar Bukhti and take the hope to continue his struggle for freedom of Balochistan. Long live Balochistan. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Mr. Bukhti, are you there? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Mr. Bukhti, first of all, I will open uh, the mic to, for journalists I know who represent uh, the media here. But first of all, I will like to ask you, uh, Mr. Bukhti, your grandfather sacrificed his life for the freedom of Baluchistan. Do you really think Baluchistan can win freedom. Your voice is breaking a lot. I think I understood. Uh, do, uh, do, uh, uh, do you think Baluchistan can be free, sir? Do you think so? Gee. Gee. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Madam Phyllis Oakley, sponsor of my grandfather's very good friend, late Ambassador Oakley, Dr. Uh, Rafa Prasad, Mr. Sent Gupta, Dr. Nazir Bhatti, Mr. Michael Mendelssohn, Soshi Marciano of Israel, Sushil Pandit, historian Professor Chris Mason, and all journalists covering the event for uh, their personal presence and intellectual support. Now, I'm a, I like your question. I am as convinced about Baluchistan freedom as I'm sure about the sun rising tomorrow, that is August 27, when my grandfather, Shahid Nawab Bukhti, challenged the army. He knew very well the dice was heavily loaded against him, but he wanted to open the floodgates of Baloch liberation by his supreme sacrifice, and that is the reason he bravely challenged the army generals. As we say, fall of the hero is rise of the nation. There is now no turning back of the clock of history in Balochistan. To all the naysayers, I will say there are solid reasons for me to believe Balochistan will be free. You can see Prime Minister Narendra Modi's recent statement is the most powerful and positive development in seven decades and best news that Baloch <coughs> struggle of blood and tears against the Pakistani occupation of Balochistan will come to an end. Days of the butchers of Balochistan are numbered. As now I am confident Prime Minister Narendra Modi will take up Balochistan issue with all regional and global leaders. I am thankful to former President Hamid Karzai and the government of Bangladesh.